this is a battery module from a 2013 Nissan LEAF. Inside of it, there's four pouch cells, and these pouch cells are set up in a two-parallel, two-series configuration. So you have your plus, your minus, and then a battery sense in the middle. You have two pouch cells connected here and two pouch cells connected there. Um, total is about 8.4 volts max across the whole thing. Any particular battery cell is going to be 4.2 volts maximum. Um, I like charging them to 4.15 or 4.1 volts so they're not hitting their full maximum. Now I've been using these in larger assemblies. In this case I have three of these guys that I put in parallel and another three in parallel and when I connect them in series I'll get a about a 16 volt battery. I originally bought 48 of these modules from a wrecked Nissan LEAF and I've built eight of these 16 volt modules. This particular one um, I had the battery management system, one of the cell monitors, there's four groups of cells in this module, um, one of the cell monitors had shorted or died shorted, and so it brought one set of these cells down to zero volts. I charged them back up, they mostly work, but they're not um, fully balanced, so I'm going to have to use a radio control aircraft charger, discharger, and analyzer to test and balance charge and capacity test each of these modules. And to do that I'm going to have to make a custom charge cable that'll have the power going to the plus and minus and a sense wire to the middle point here so that we can keep the cells on this side of the module and the cells on that side of the module charging in balance. So starting at the battery end of things we need two connectors to connect to the power side and a smaller connector to connect to the sense screw. I like using ring connectors although um, you do have to take the bolts or screws all the way out to put them on. Um, some people like the spade connectors that you can just slide under without removing all the way. Um, I don't like those because as you're removing the bolt it can slide out unexpectedly or if the bolt loosens it can slide out unexpectedly. With the ring connectors you know that things are going to stay on there until the bolt or screw is completely removed. Now most radio aircraft chargers have these four millimeter banana connections. Um, I purchased this XT60 charging cable and it has an XT60 connector on the end of it because one of my other batteries also uses an XT60 connector. So my adapter cable I'm going to make have an XT60 connector to go into that um, and then I'll use this to attach it to the charger. But I also need to attach the balance leads to the charger. So I bought this guy here, which is a 2S, a two-cell um, um, battery charger. This is for a tiny little model aircraft battery um, with super tiny little wires here for the power adapters. So I'm not going to be using the power connectors, but I am going to be using this plug here, which will plug into my radio-controlled battery charger, and then I'll hook in the white to that center terminal there, and then the red and black will go to sense these guys here. Then you're going to need some power wire. Um, this particular wire here, just hardware store THWN, this is 10 gauge. My RC charger balancer can go to um, 30 amps in or out, and so I need the 10 gauge wire for that. I mean, 30 amps at 8 volts is still only about 250 watts, um, but you need some pretty thick wire for that. You can buy special, you know, multi thin conductor silicone coated um, model airplane wire that's super flexible. I didn't really need the flexibility since I'm dealing with such big batteries. I can you know, just stick these things on like that. Um, I did want black and red wires because my connectors are just yellow generic so you definitely want to hook up you know the right polarity here so having the wires be the right color definitely is going to help you avoid mistakes. Alright you're also going to need some hookup wire for the sense terminal and you also want to run your sensing for your balancing leads through the same type and length of wire for the plus and minus. So I'm going to be using the thick wire for the serious power for charging and discharging. But for balancing, this guy here, um, I'm going to be using the same length 
and size this is a 22 gauge wire. Um, my balancing current really just has about a half an, half an amp, 500 milliamps maximum for the balancing current, so you can use much smaller wire for that. Now, if you're going to be using crimp connectors, you want a good crimper, so, you know, spend the bucks, get a ratcheting crimper for something small like this. Use a hydraulic crimper for any really big lugs. The hardest part here is that you have a mismatch between your terminal size and the wire size, because you have to have a terminal big enough to work on automotive parts, and the wires are going to be really just sized for an RC charger here. So that's how it is. I like putting the terminal in the crimpers so that I can then use that to hold the terminal while I put the wire in. Now you're never supposed to solder a crimp terminal because the solder may go down the strands of the wire and make them brittle and make them break off at the back end. However, in this particular case, when it's a sense terminal and I want a really good electrical connection, I'm going to break that rule. Um, I'm going to solder just a tiny little bit at the tip here um, to keep that thing in, in real good electrical contact. Also, there's a question in my mind of, hey, I'm using this terminal that's for a much <laughs> lower gauge wire with a 22 gauge wire, so um, I crimp that thing down, it's tight on it, but still um, it's a little big for that wire, so I'm going to use some solder just to make sure that's connected well. To minimize the amount of solder I'm doing here, I'm going to heat up the terminal first and then tap the solder just to the tip here after that heat goes down. So I'm counting on the heat moving down this terminal to where the wire is. And you can see I melted the insulation on the back of the crimp terminal there. And it started moving in my clamp. Um, but now I know the metal is definitely hot enough to melt that solder right in. All right, on the higher power side of things, this 10 gauge wire is just about the perfect fit for that terminal, and that terminal is the perfect fit for that bolt. All right, in another exception to good terminal usage, practices. You're never supposed to put two wires in the same crimp terminal. Um, however, because this sense wire is so small compared to the other one, I'm not too worried. If the sense wire should pull out, I think we're still going to have plenty of force gripping that guy in. Um, and if the sense wire pulls out, my charger will just say, whoa, the positive sense is wrong, um, and so I'm just going to not work. It's possible my charger has the positive side tied into the positive sense internally, so I might not even need this wire, um, but some charge Chargers have a separate, completely separate circuit for measuring the difference in voltage between the different cells that's more accurate than their main power circuit. So I make sure both ends of the stranded wire are coming out to the same distance there. This sucker is definitely going to be a two-handed crimp. Alright, so that's the plus side. When getting these wires into the terminal, the technique I found works well for me is to have the smaller wire a half inch farther up from the bigger wire. So you can put the smaller wire in first, get it threaded, and then the bigger wire fits in on its own. Um, and then you just pull the smaller wire back to be at the same distance. And on these yellow terminals, which have a little longer crimping body, after you've done the first crimp there, you can put your crimper tool just slightly farther back and do a second crimp. Then you'll get, you know, two marks on that thing. Alright, so you have all your terminals together, you have your negative side of the battery, the sense terminal in the middle, and the positive side of the battery. The two power cables come out, and then you have your three sense tables. I'm going to hook these three sense cables up to that little jack I harvested um, for connecting into my charger, and that'll determine the maximum length of my power cables as well. All right, so this is a combination charge and balance cable for small batteries. Um, you can see that the power jacks here are pretty small, and it's not for charging a high amount of current. Um, if you found one that was just the 
balancing cables that wouldn't have these extra wires here. I'm going to just cut those off. I'm going to save them in case I want to use those banana jacks for something else. Um, but you know, I'm not going to be using that. So I'm just going to be using these three sense cables. This guy here will plug into something at some place, so I might save that for something else. Um, but I'm prioritizing the amount of cable with this jack here. And I have specifically picked my black, white, and red wires to match these colors here, um, just following industry you know, norms so that people can recognize what the heck this thing is if they find it. This is the point you remind yourself that the heat shrink tubing always goes on before you solder the wires together. No fancy lineman splice for me. I'm just heating these things up and getting a little bit of solder on them. Another reminder, don't touch your heat shrink tubing to the hot wires until they've cooled. Now I've seen people do this successfully with a match, but I've always just burnt the sucker when I try that, so a hot air gun seems like the easy way to me. Alright, the only thing I have left to do is put a matching XT60 connector on the end of these guys. I want my power wires to be a little bit shorter than my sense wires because the sense wires are most likely to be broken if they get stretched. Um, so what I'm going to do here is follow this guy all the way down to my sense connector. And that sense connector is going to be plugged into my charger. Also plugged into my charger are these banana jack connectors. So I'm basically following the banana jack connectors back up to here, and that's where I need to cut these big power wires to put on my XT60, except I'm going to back it out a couple of inches just to make sure the power wires are a little bit shorter than the sense wires. All right, the heat shrinking for an XT60 connector gets a little complicated. I'm going to be using quarter inch heat shrink over both wires. This is not to cover any actual exposed solder joint. It's just for wire management to keep these two wires together. Um, I'm going to be repositioning those later on. So those go down far. Um, this half inch heat shrink will just barely fit over the XT60 connector. So that's going on both wires. And then we're going to need to cover the place where the wire actually connects to this guy. So I'm going to have individual heat shrinks. One's red for the red wire. Although that's optional on the color, and the black one for the black wire. So that's what you need to put on before you try to solder this sucker together. So when you're soldering really thick wire like this that doesn't like to rotate easily, um, at the other end I find it's nice to attach these terminals through a bolt so that they stay flat so that the other end of your wire doesn't twist out of place. Or I should say that when you solder it in the condition, in the orientation it's at right now, these guys will stay flat to each other instead of one being you know, 90 degrees out of phase with it. When soldering these XT60 connectors I get out the big soldering iron. I like to fill the connector body with solder first. And I'm doing opposite sides here so that one side doesn't get too hot. It gives it a chance to cool down. So, observing your polarity, you got minus up top. That's the black wire. We're going to heat the wire, and when the wire gets hot enough to pull itself into the solder, we know things are good. Well, to make this heat conduct a little better, I'm going to dab some solder on the part of the iron that's touching the wire. And if you're doing it right, you're going to feel that wire get hot in your fingers, even underneath the insulation. You might have to go a little bit to the side there.
You want to hold that in place while it cools off. And this wire does get warm. You might want to be wearing gloves for this. You also want to make sure your heat shrink tubing is well down the wire so that warmth doesn't start shrinking your tubing. All right, so that's one side done. We want to flip this entire wire over because it's pretty thick wire. All right, that thing's connected. All right, after these connectors are fully cooled, you can move this heat shrink tubing up to cover those two solder joints. And then after you heat shrink that in place, you can move this one up over the entire connector like that and heat shrink it in place. And then you can take these guys down here and heat shrink them at various points on your wire to kind of keep your wires together. All right, so here's the final cable. I have my uh, positive and negative with the high current capacity charging cables, along with the sense for the middle. Those go down to here. Um, I plug in my XT60 adapter cable that hooks into my charger. And then at this end, I have the power from the charger. And I also have the sense balance leads that goes into the charger.